Hello Rage Quitters, my name is Terminator UK and Happy New Year to you. Yes, I know it's Happy New Year in February, but I've been quite ill during January so I've only just about recovered enough to take this video. And in true Rage Quitters style, we're always a bit later with our uh, greetings than expected. <coughs> okay, so um, we're here today to review the Razer Tiamat 7.1 V2 surround sound gaming headset. Um, but before we start on that, what the hell was the pre-intro video all about? Well, let me just pick up this one. Here's one I made earlier. This hunk of junk, if you believe it, is eight years old. Well, you probably can believe it. Um, it's actually a Rocat um, cave, the original Rocat cave 5.1 uh, with a Antlion um, mod mic version four um, strapped to it with some super glue and some um, bra braided cord uh, to uh, hold all the cables. Yeah, it's a complete Frankenstein headset. But you know what? To date, and this is why I had it for eight years, this is the best sounding combination of headset and the Razer Tiamat has got a huge amount of competition to go up against. Anyway, out of the old and in with the new. So, the Razer Tiamat 7.1 V2 gaming headset. Oh, it is a beautiful, beautiful gaming headset. Um, I mean, when you take it out of the box, wow. But there's nothing, I haven't seen any headset, or gaming or otherwise, um, that surpasses the look and feel of this particular headset. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, of course, uh, let's start with the, uh, let's start with the box. Um, the, uh, you get the classic um, black and uh, green razor box. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you've got um, nice foam padding inside. The headset goes um, obviously towards the centre and cabling towards the bottom. Um, very, very well presented um, as always um, from Razer. Um, so I'm most happy with that and its packaging. Um, so the, the headset itself. So what's so special about this headset? Well, I think, and this is after, comes after some extensive research, you'll find this is the only true 7.1, bear with me here, the, the, the only true 7.1 surround sound gaming headset that is analog, as in that it has five discrete jacks for microphone, um, center channel, um, side channel, rear channel, and front channel, got, got those all right, um, center and sub, that one. Um, and a USB connector for its power. Um, so you need to make sure um, that you have a compatible graphics, um, graphics card. Got those on my brain. Sound card, graphics card won't do you much good. Sound card for these to plug into. Now you can use onboard sound, but as you'll see in this review a bit later, I highly recommend that you don't. Um, and uh, we'll come on to the details a bit of that a bit later. So I think you'll find it's the only true 7.1 surround sound gaming headset that has um, discrete channels that plugged into your sound card and has all of the, the drivers that are available in the headset itself. If we look on the back of the, of the box um, and actually on in the actual headset itself, I'm not sure if you can see, see that on screen. Um, these are beautiful, by the way. I love the window on the side. Um, easy tiger, we'll get onto that. Um, <clears throat> you can see that the um, the arrangement inside the ear cup is, um, is well, it's, it's an engineering marvel how they actually managed to do this. Uh, but basically you've got your um, subwoofer, 40 millimeter subwoofer towards the, the center. Uh, you've got a 30 millimeter front channel um, and you have a 30 millimeter um, center channel um, and 20 millimeters side surround and 20 millimeter rear surround. So um, what I'm talking about is the drivers, the, the tiny little speakers that are inside the, um, the ear cup. So you've got all of that arrangement twice in that headset on either side. Um, and I can say right off the bat now that gives you unparalleled, just there is nothing that could, except for uh, obviously an external speaker setup in a headset that gives you unparalleled precision in your um, surround sound experience so um, but I think you'll find after all of that said that Razer with the original Tiamat 7.1 and the V2 are the only headsets on the market which tick all of those boxes so to say this is a niche product is um, you know is well, it's the understatement of the year. I know we haven't been in the year very long, but it is still the understatement of the year. Um, 
and that that I'll come on to is probably a disclaimer on this review that 99% of you need not apply for this headset. Now, I'm sure that's got a few people raging and going, oh yeah, no, you can't tell me that. Well, good for you. Listen on and uh, we shall be educating what this headset's all about. Okay, uh, let's go on to a few more features of the, um, the headset itself. Before we get on to the main event, um, we'll go with the uh, inline uh, remote. Um, oh, you can't really call it a remote, it's like a control center. This thing is phenomenal. Um, probably, I'll, I'll go with probably my only complaint about it first and then we'll go on to the good bits. My only complaint about this particular headset is the, um, the branding on the um, branding decals lettering, should we say, uh, got there in the end on the um, headset, um, headset remote itself. Um, and just like when I reviewed the Black Widow X, which is behind me, I don't know why Razer do this, but the writing is incredibly hard to actually see. So unless you're in a very, very well lit room or you've got a torch to see on top of, it's very hard to dis determine which ones will be channels. Um, but that's about where the complaints stop at that point. So basically this dial at the top that you can turn around, you're not gonna see the, the writing on from the video, but you'll have to trust me, has got um, go, going clockwise, got your side channel, center, front, main volume, microphone volume, sub volume, and rear channel. So all of those channels, all of those drivers within the ear cups themselves can all be individually tailored um, to your exact need. Um, and as you'll find the recurring theme in this review, um, this is definitely the tinkerer's dream of any headset that I've ever um, used. It's both its complete curse, again, as you'll see in this review, and its blessing that the more you tinker with this, the more you get out of it. If you like to twiddle with all the knobs and bells and whistles, this is definitely the headset for you. So. That covers all of the um, that covers all of the different channels. In the centre here, you've got this dial, which will, depending on the mode that you're currently on, will actually uh, adjust the volume up and down. So a really nice um, action on that, and um, it's quite clicky and robust. You can feel every time that you go to the next sort of ratchet. Uh, you've got three buttons in the middle here. Uh, you've got um, a mute mic on the left hand side. Um, this one, I absolutely love this feature. So this basically is the speaker pass-through. So if you see on the back of this remote here, you have got um, center, uh, sorry, front, um, center, sub, uh, rear, and side surround uh, different channels. So what you can do is you can set up the, um, the headset to plug directly into your sound card. And then if you've got another 5.1, 7.1 speaker setup, you can plug those jacks all into the back of uh, this control unit and then simply to um, change between the headset and the speaker setup, you can literally press that centre button, boom, go straight out to the speakers. Brilliant little feature, absolutely love it. The On the right hand side of the remote is the 7.1 on or off function. Honestly, I can't see any scenario, even if you just want to listen to some music in stereo where you wouldn't want the 7.1 on, unlike your virtual surround sounds, which are completely the opposite of, of that, where you'd want to turn it off to get rid of the um, the muddy um, virtual horridness. If you like um, dedicated drivers in your surround sound set headsets, you know what I mean by that. Um, and um, you... Um, basically we'll put it back down to um, 2.1. In this, it's like completely the opposite. You really don't want to ever use just one driver because it will be very, very tinny in this particular headset. Um, the, the headset is kind of <laughs> a victim of its own success, um, a victim of its own engineering. Um, every component of this headset has to work in unison together, almost like a a perfectly timed symphony orchestra um, and if it doesn't then it sounds like a heap of crap um, and I'm sorry to say that and to say it so bluntly it really does and I think this is where a lot of people um, fall flat on their face when they get this headset they plug it in they expect it to work straight out of the box and it doesn't and it sounds awful and I had that same experience and 
I was thinking for a £189 headset, I was like, what the hell? You know, what the hell? This does not sound like £189 worth of headset. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is because it's so complex and it needs to be tweaked, all of those settings and everything needs to be working in perfect unison. And when it does, it sounds fantastic, spoiler alert. Um, but to get there, it requires a lot of user effort to go into. Um, so going back to the um, music scenario, if you're going to be listening to music, you want your sound cards um, up mixing feature in um, in the Sound Blaster realm. That's called um, CMSS 3D, I believe. Um, I don't know what it's called on the Asus Zona because um, in this particular review, I use um, an Asian Tech Home Theatre HD 7.1 sound card incredibly hard to get really great sound card love it if you can ever find it on ebay um but good luck finding it um <laughs> that's not going to help um so you'll need to put your sort of up mix mode so you basically use all the channels on your um on the headset at all times to get the most out of it um okay other, other than that moving on the it's hard to get excited about cord but i still manage it the braiding on the cord is oh it's just absolutely fantastic it, it You've, you've felt a braided cord and then you've then now you're feeling a high resolution braided cord and now that sounds absolutely ridiculous it's just that attention to detail um and perfection in the manufacturing process is probably the best term for it it's just absolutely fantastic you know you can feel this is a high quality product this this long cable with many different channels is not going to tangle on you so um you know hats off to razor that's another brilliant feature of the headset Right, okay, let's move on to the um, main event before we get too distracted. So, the cans themselves. Oh, this is, this is what every single headset in the world should feel like. It is light. Can you believe it that you've got all of these drivers in both sides of the cans and it's light? It feels amazing weight, super, super light. This will not um, be uncomfortable on your head at all. And look at the looks. This is... Oh, this is brilliant. So, so good. So Razor have put in this, um, so obviously it's got this black theme with this nice um, sort of brushed aluminium. It's not brushed aluminium. This is actually classic, but it looks um, like brushed aluminium um, with these kind of industrial riveted um, screw screws in the side. Um, and then they've got this nice clear window that you see into the headset. And this plugs into the Razor Synapse software and it's got chroma backlighting. Oh, home run just absolutely superb um you'll see it later on this review when we light this baby up it just looks so so nice so they've done an excellent job um with the aesthetics of the product um in the left hand ear cup you've got a unidirectional microphone um boom microphone that basically uh just folds down like that when you want it and when you don't want to use it, it goes up into position and just snaps into position very nicely very very good um feel and uh, nice nice tidy and neat there um probably the only sort of criticism on that it doesn't have any additional functionality in terms of uh, you don't get like a mute led and when you put the boom up with a lot of other uh, manufacturers like say the corsair void or the um sennheiser game one for example that actually mutes the microphone it doesn't in this case so this is purely just a um you know logistics thing to tidy it up so that that puts it out, out the way um, moving on to the headband, the headband is it just if you look at this and you've never seen the product, you think, oh, that looks really, really basic. Do you know, again, this is you know perfectly engineered that you haven't wasted any weight at all. You've got these two nice brushed aluminium bands at the top, incredibly high. Well, I, I believe they're aluminium. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they're titanium or some other space age material, but they're. They, they look like brushed aluminium and they're so so well manufactured strong yet incredibly light that's all you need on the band um and the actual headband itself has got an incredibly um it's a sim a simple but perfect mechanism and literally it's just on kind of like a spring system if you can see that they basically just auto adjust your head you haven't got to do any sort of ratchets on the side of your head as soon as you put them on perfect fit and lastly, but certainly not not least, the um, leatherette memory phone ear cups. 
I could just do this all day. These are so, so nice, incredibly high quality, so, so soft, like it's been stuffed with unicorn's hair or something like that. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, very, very nice feel to them. And finally, when you put the headset on, boom, absolute perfection. Very, very noise cancelling. Um, I can still hear my own voice, but it, it really does block all the other sound out. So light, so comfortable. I could just wear this all day. Um, you know, just out of the box, Razer have got all of the bits that often get missed on a headset in terms of the comfort, um, the fit and everything. Just absolutely perfect. You can see I've had to have no adjustment at all and it just feels amazing on the head. Oh, lovely. Last, last but not least, um, inside the box you get a, a couple of plates. And this is a lovely little touch. Again, completely not necessary. And I don't know why a lot of people would want to cover up the beautiful windows on the side. But if those flashing lights and the and that 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 kind of um, aesthetics is not really your bag, if you want something that's a lot plainer, or um, as of another another thought, if you go to um, like land land parties and events and you travel around um, with these cams, um, they come with two magnetic plates on the back. Oh, actually, these are just plastic plates. But if you see on the back, they've got these um, these four magnetic points, and literally to apply them, this is great. All you have to do literally hold up the ear cup put it nearby and clip straight on and there you go you've covered up the clip and now it just looks like sort of like one solid gray um, color with a um, slightly shiny um, razor logo I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera in a different light um, so again it's like minimalist look and it, oh, it, look, it still looks amazing like that but of course if you oh, God, I'm, Gonna struggle to get this off now. Uh, at the bottom, yeah, there's a little indentation. Oh, that was skillful, wasn't it? Um, so basically, just flip the um, flip the sides off, and again, it exposes the wonderful speakers um, within the uh, window to the actual headset itself. Okay, I think that covers all of the look, feel, um, aesthetics of the um, headset itself. Uh, let's go on to a bit of settings and a bit of testing and uh, see where we go from there. Welcome back to the second part of the review and um, we're going to go through the different sound card settings uh, for this particular pair of cans to get the most out of them. As we said earlier uh, the sound card settings are one of the most important aspects um, that you can uh, configure to make to get the best out of this headset out of the box they don't sound like an amazing 189 pounds headset um, as a sad fact to say but um, once you tweak some of the uh, settings to get the most out of them it really really does transform the headset um, so let's have a uh, go through and see what we can see um, so these settings are based off the uh, Creative X5 chipset which is, which is getting a little bit old now um, but the um, most of these settings have got equivalent um, features that you'll find in most major sound card manufacturers so you can convert them to uh, the settings that are available to yourself. Um, so let's start at the top. The Creative X5 CMSS3D is basically the um, stereo up mixing. Uh, so, so for this I have uh, turned it on to start with and then under the surround setting I've actually used an upmix mode of stereo surround I found that to be the, the best one uh, to go for and then the envelopment if you um, pull that down to 50% um, that balances the um, usage of the front and rear drivers um, equally and it seems to sound the absolute best for um, stereo sound sources. Moving on to the XY crystallizer, and this is one of the features that I really love about um, uh, creative sound cards. Um, this uh, greatly enhances the um, both the treble and the uh, bass, the punchiness of it. It makes it sound incredibly clear. I'm sure audio files will tell me that this is actually distorting the sound from its original source, um, to, but to me, it also it sounds pretty awesome um, when you enable it. Um, I found the setting of 75% to be the sweet spot. Um, if you crank it up to the max, it tends to overdrive the uh, the small um, speakers that you've got inside this uh, particular um, uh, drivers inside this particular headset, and it can uh, begin to sound a bit distorted. So 75% um, seems to be the sweet spot. Now moving down to the equaliser, uh, this is um, 
an essential setting that I'd say. Um, and this is the, the pattern that I've got set up. Um, you'll find with this headset, you'll quickly become an entry level audio file and start to understand um, about these different tone settings. Basically, um, from this 31 hertz to 500 hertz is kind of like your base um, uh, tones, and then your 1K to 16K is kind of like your treble tones. Um, on the left hand side, you see this document uh, that I've got all of the equalizer settings on the left. Um, that you may want to use the same as me, you may not want to. I found these particular settings to really suit my particular taste. Um, there's some enhancements in the 61. Um, sorry, the 62 hertz and the 120 hertz by uh, five decibels, and then um, towards the top here, you've got um, uh, the 8k at plus six decibels and the 16k at plus 7.5. But you can see all the individual settings here on the left hand side. I found that these particular settings really kind of in enhance the bass greatly and the clarity of the um, the sound overall. Um, and I was very happy with it. So um, yep, give them a go, and you'll find that that will transform your experience over a flat equalizer um uh, which you just it just will not sound very good as soon as you you crank it up and i've heard this in many different reviews and i didn't actually believe them until i tried it myself it really does transform the headset sound as i said earlier in the review you get out this headset where you, you put into it um so tweak these settings to your desired taste and you'll find that this headset of all headsets will really react to the different equalizers that you put into on most headsets it will only make a minor adjustment to the sound this one it really really eats it for breakfast so definitely tweak those settings um, to your desired level Moving on to the speaker configuration, make sure that you've got this setting set at 7.1 speakers. Um, don't use any sort of headset mode. Treat them like a normal set of um, 7.1 surround sound speakers to make sure that you've got all the discrete channels, um, including the center, front, side channels, and rear channels, and also the bass channel. Um, that will make sure that all programs will target the um, different channels correctly and uh, get, you get the most out of this particular headset. Um, in the X5 uh, console, you've got this um, THX uh, additional um, console. Uh, now, one of the important features I found under here is under bass management. Uh, there's a selection of two different speaker sizes, large and small. Um, I think most sound cards tend to have um, this sort of definition between speaker sizes. Make sure you select them that's small rather than large, and it, that seemed to increase the um, the clarity and the tone of the bass. Um, Overall, so um, that was a good tweak to make. Um, speaking of bass, um, we'll move on to that. Make sure that you've enabled bass redirection. I think in the Asus um, series that's known as smart bass, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, basically, bass redirection means that uh, below a certain frequency, which I've got here set to 80 hertz, um, it will actually redirect that bass through to the um, subwoofer and uh, therefore make those low tones tones much more punchy and growly. Um, I think that's a word. If not, I've just made it up. And um, you'll find that the, the sound is greatly enhanced um, as a result. Um, now, the story doesn't quite end there. If When I went into the Windows sound properties under speakers, if you click on speakers and then click on properties and then go to the tone setting, um, what I've been what I've done here is I've increased the um, bass balance by one and a half pips. Don't crank it all up to um, plus 12 um, decibels, otherwise you'll find that the, the bass becomes is severely distorted um, and the headset can't take it. You'll find that you'll get like a, a, a verberation through the headset where it's not dealing with it correctly. So just a tiny bit of extra bass makes all the difference to the sound without distorting it. So um, try and put it up like that. Um, other than that, there's a couple of other settings uh, under the recording and microphone. I found the, well, my particular sound card, your mileage is going to vary, so um, uh, make sure you tweak that as desired. I actually had to put this down, which is very rare for microphones. I normally have to crank them up to 100%, but put this down to 50%. Um, unfortunately, there is quite a bit of static through the microphone, and we will do a recording uh, later on. Um, this is probably one of the downfalls of analog um, headsets, and don't take my word for it because it, it seems to be the analog microphones are very very personal to each system um, depending on the um, earthing and um, shielding that you get from um, either the motherboard or the sound card there's so many different factors um, can determine the amount of static so don't take that as gospel um, in terms of the um, you know the microphone settings and whether you're going to get any problems with that 
Um, that seems to work for me. And uh, what we'll do is on the gameplay footage in just a moment, I'm going to actually use the um, microphone on the headset itself so you can listen and see how it sounds um, in the real world. Okay, um, that deals with um, most of the actual settings for the, the, the sound itself um, uh, for the headset. Now, if we move on to the Razer Synapse software, you will find absolutely no settings to do <clears throat> with actually how the headset sounds. Now, that's because this is a pure analog headset. It's very rare that you get this on the market. Um, and the nearest equivalent is with discrete drivers is something like the uh, Asus Centurion, which we reviewed before. But even that has got its own proprietary USB base station and sound card that goes for it. Um, so it's not exactly the same as this and therefore they can put more um, effects in line. Uh, this is purely based off your sound card. So all of the settings you're going to find in your sound card. So in the... Um, in the Synapse software, basically everything is to do with the lighting. Now, there's not that many lighting effects. Basically, they're limited to um, breathing, spectrum, cycling, um, static or off. So that's basically the four different settings that you've got on there. Um, you haven't got any other settings um, that you can change on that. Um, you've got different brightnesses of dim, normal and bright. Um, spectrum cycling basically gives you um, every color that it goes through. Um, breathing allows you to alternate between two colors and static is basically as it says one color and you can also turn the lighting off which seems a bit pointless to me. Um, other than that you can also make some programs which actually link with particular programs and also you've got the Chroma apps feature where you can um, get the lighting to go in tune with different applications that's quite cool um, but it's a, sort of a, um, a feature that's available on um, any Chroma um, Razer peripheral is not uh, unique to this particular device. Okay, I think that covers um, all the settings that we want to go through. Uh, let's move on to the gameplay test to see uh, how these cans perform. Welcome back to the gameplay element of the uh, review. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a quick go on uh, Counter-Strike Go, uh, no pun intended, uh, with the cans on and uh, use it for um, spatial um, surround testing. Um, see how good that these cans are particularly form. So I can immediately hear like many, many different like discrete sounds all around me. The little drivers are all kind of pinpointed all around. It's an uh, amazing ex immersive experience actually. I won't claim any particular skill on this. There's any medium bots playing offline, but um, basically I'm just literally just using this for um, for the surround sound aspect of it. Uh, to try and um, locate them. <laughs> you can see that I'm a bit rusty on this one. I'm listening all right, right. I can hear someone down the steps out as my teammate. Let's see if we can uh, hear anyone around the corner. Nothing yet. It's going to accrual. Can hear someone through that door, yeah. There we go. Just someone to the right of me, or the behind you, there he is. Oh! Didn't hear him to the last moment. You can see also um, how the microphone sounds as I'm talking. Um, the um, the quality of sort of the voice when I was um, using it in Windows wasn't fantastic. It was what I'd probably call like um, like um, uh, like a low quality phone call sort of sound. Um, but it's meant to be unidirectional, and hopefully it's suppressing um, some of the sounds of my keys. I've got a um, a Black Widow X uh, keyboard that I'm using here with um, Razer's green switches, so it, it tends to be quite loud. Um, but hopefully the unidirectional pattern will um, make sure that that is um, suppressed as much as possible. So I can hear some sounds directly out of the front now for the headset. I'll go and investigate. I can hear some down the steps here to the right. Oh, 
Definitely hear a couple, yep, yeah, there's a couple of guys. Got him. Listen out for some mortal. Oh, definitely one for the door, yep. Yeah. Just come in, come in now. Yeah, can, when I'm here I can definitely hear all that you can see on the mini map on the top left there, but I can definitely hear all that sound right behind me. It's very, very distinct. You get quite used to using it to locate your enemies. Let's see if I can hear anyone else. It's quite eerie really that all of the, the different drivers are <laughs> the notice in me. Sneaky. Here's some three spawn in front there. But they all work in unison together to produce this incredible surround sound experience. Um, the actual quality of the sound is probably technically not as amazing as, uh, say, a stereo pair of cans. You don't get quite the sort of like rich depth of sound or booming bass that you get with um, like a high quality set of cans. Um, but after these tweaks that we went through, and that's why I was saying it's so important to go through these tweaks, it does sound pretty damn amazing still. Um, but out of the box, it doesn't sound anywhere near like as good um, as it does after tweaking it. And I think that's probably where most people sort of think, oh, can't, can't deal with this headset and return it back to the, um, the manufacturer. There's some uh, sounds around the corner of the other side of this building. Oh, yep, there we go. Sorry, shadow. Oh, someone coming. Uh, teammate, yep. So I won't go on for too much longer about this, but as you can, uh, as you can appreciate, I, I, you're not going to be able to. <laughs> I can hear that guy coming around the corner. This is the, this is the great thing about the headset. It's a, it's a real pleasure to use. You can, oh, I can see that guy over there as well. I can, um, yeah, you've got this huge sort of like 3D soundscape and using it to position your enemies is fantastic. Uh, no, it's, a, it's a very, very impressive experience and... Uh, <laughs> had to do that. Right, okay, that, that'll do for the review. We could just go on for this for hours, couldn't we? But yeah, the positional sort of awareness... Sorry, I'm going to have to get Sorry, Na now we're a rage quit. Positional awareness is absolutely excellent. Right, let's move on to the conclusion. I know this review is getting pretty pretty long by now. Okay, see you in the next part. Phew, we got to the end then, the conclusion. Even I'll admit this was a very, very long review, so I sincerely apologise and hope that you are still awake at the end of this uh, fairly epic review. Okay, let's try and summarise and make some conclusions. Um, so, first of all, first impressions then, the, the Razer Tiamat 7.1 um, V2 gaming headset, what an amazing headset in terms of its appearance, wow, just amazing, that out of the box experience is just absolutely superb, the box itself, the build quality, the comfort, um, how light it is, how how well it's um yeah how well it's put together it's just absolutely fantastic it just knocks it out of the park and it feels like a 189 pound headset out of the box now you're probably thinking that this conclusion the rating just a minute oh it's obviously going to get the legendary award actually no i don't think i can give this product a legendary award and this is this is where dun 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 plot twist time um completely different than probably what you're going to expect at the end of this I can't recommend this product to most individuals. Now, the reason why I say this is you can see by just literally the, the document that I've made and the level of tweaking, the out-of-the-box experience in terms of the audio quality is very, very bad. For a £189.99 headset, you should ex be expecting significantly better than that. Some of, um, That kind of price range will snag you something like um, a Sennheiser Game Zero or Game One, um, which out-of-the-box and plugged into um, a, a decent sound card is going to give you significantly better sound quality. So this is, a, I know this is in a completely different niche, um, but it comes up against a, a price bracket where people are expecting more straight out of the box, if that makes any sense. Um, so whilst I do like the discrete drivers, 
in in this particular headset and i have been for years and you saw by the monstrosity that i put together um an absolutely dedicated hardcore fan of um, discrete drivers and headsets i think that this headset and unfortunately it's definitely not Razer's fault because they've done an amazing job of doing it it's kind of a victim of its own complication and its success and I've come to the conclusion that 7.1 over say 5.1 is just not very well programmed into PC games I found that there were many issues where um, sound sources and um, particularly in games like Overwatch where um, sounds that were coming from like a particular distance um, or maybe using a certain channel just were not um, firing off the speakers as they should. Now, because these are all discrete speakers, you absolutely rely on the um, the audio being pinpoint perfect at each one of those speakers. And when it doesn't work, um, they can really let down the experience. Like for example, when I was playing in Overwatch, which we haven't shown in this particular review, um, if you turn down the center channel, for example, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. It's like that the game isn't actually firing anything down that center channel um yeah if you go into like another game say like um destiny 2 like the wallpaper i've got um not the greatest um peer-to-peer peer-to-peer uh, um, pvp game to use an example but if you play in the crucible um the soundscape on like a modern title like that works really well and you can pinpoint your enemies um and also in the counter strike example there is actually a specific 5.1 surround sound setting and that works quite well but then in other isolated examples, then you, you find it that it's just not quite um, hitting the speakers as it should do. And it really should do this. And as, as I say, it's not Razer's fault because of this. Um, it just seems to be how um, games are manufactured um, and expecting people to use stereo headphones. So it's like it's, like it's over, been over-engineered and it's over-complicated in a world that is not designed for that kind of... Um, uh, 7.1 setup, but certainly not in the PC world. In in movies and where it is designed for that, then obviously it works very well. And the and when when it does all come together, this headset sounds phenomenal. But in most cases, I'd just say that it's just too complicated. Um, and other other issues of the headset, um, the the drivers inside the headset have to be small. And if if you Again, I was saying, like I was saying earlier in the um, video, you have to become a bit of an audiophile to appreciate this product. Um, if you look on the back of the box, you'll actually find that the impedance on the, uh, so that's like the resistance um, to the um, particular drivers is quite low. Um, now, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, but for example, like the, the, the subwoofer is like 16, 16 ohms and the, all the other um, channels are like only 32 ohms. Now, like a good pair of um, Sennheiser um, headphones, um, uh, they actually reduced the um, Game Zero, I think it was, from the original version was 150 ohms down to 50 um, ohms. And um, here's, here's the sidebar I'm going to throw in. <laughs> I'm not going to try and make a recommendation out of this because I do think these are amazing headphones. But, dun dun dun, yes, yes, it's horrible to say it, but your common off-the-shelf pair of headphones so this is um, HyperX Cloud 2 you'll probably recognize now I've actually modded this as I always do uh, now I've taken out the USB sound card because that does make it sound particularly poor and I've actually got myself a three and a half millimeter um, extension cable on here I actually found and I'm, I'm hating to say this because I want to love this headset so much I'm actually found that these with a um, which have actually got 60 ohms um, impedance on them um, and 53 millimeter drivers on them. These give a more consistent experience, let's say. I'm not going to say a better experience because I think positionally the the um, tier mats just is in another league in terms of discrete sound. But consistency, if you pair this, and this is going to be, this is very ironic, with razors surround software which is very very good in fact it's so good i think i might even make my own article there um you, you get a very very convincing experience much better than any sort of virtual surround sound because i was a hater of that before um before recently uh, you do get a very very good experience um that is positionally fairly accurate 
Um, and Razer Surround is one application that I've found that doesn't greatly distort the sound. In most other applications, I've found that the virtual surround sound makes the, the, the whole um, experience sound absolutely terrible and washed out and echoey and horrible. But um, I've actually found that to be um, a decent alternative. So it, it, it's one of these things I, I want to absolutely love this headset. Um, one other thing that um, I think was pretty unforgivable on a headset of this caliber is the microphone. Now I know it's quite common for gaming headsets to have a, not a great microphone, but this just feels like the ball has been severely dropped on a, again I'm saying, on a £189 headset. You wouldn't expect the, the, um, the microphone to be particularly bad um, and I just found that it was in this case. Um, on my um, on my other headset, the Rocat ones that are modified, the um, the Mog mic. Now I know I know that's a, a forty pound microphone, yeah, so it's quite expensive. It's like light years, light years better than this. It sounds absolutely perfect in comparison to this. Um, I really, really like the Mog mic, and you just you just I can't understand why the I know that they've gone for compactness here, but I can't understand why there isn't the calibre of microphone that's anywhere near that level. Now, on the positive side, one thing I did enjoy was the um, the unidirectional pickup. Hopefully, in the gameplay footage, you saw a lack of the the very noisy keys that I get on my keyboard. Um, that is, it's normally quite striking, and most of my friends um, comment on that again and again and again. Um, uh, but it's my cross to bear and um, this microphone is very good at actually eliminating that particular noise um, so um, there is that element to it but as you probably heard on the recording you definitely hear it in windows there is quite a lot of static on the microphone um, now mileage is going to vary on this and this is one of the problems with analog headsets um, the two different people can have two different experiences because um, different grounding and shielding and the sound cards make a big difference in terms of the amount of static and um, ground loop that you get. Another thing that I researched and found out. Um, and um, it's, it's going to vary between PCs. So whilst I'm getting static on my PC, you might not get that same static. Um, one last thing I'd say about the microphone, and again, I'm not sure if it's my setup or this particular headset. Um, and I'd find this, again, unforgivable, is... I think it may be something to do with the control unit where the um, your audio from your game seems to bleed, if you like, somewhat into the microphone and gets um, and gets broadcasted back to the people that you're connected with. Um, and that sounds really strange. So, for example, if your in-game sounds are quite loud, um, when you're talking, that seems to get transmitted as well with your voice so people can hear um, some of the sounds that are coming from your system as well. Um, obviously that can be um, corrected somewhat by reducing the in-game sounds and also by, um, like for example, in something like uh, Discord, you can increase the sensitivity slider on the, the voice sensitivity. So it's only when your voice, which is above the gameplay volume, is speaking that it comes through. Um, but again, you know, on such an expensive pair of headphones, I just wasn't expecting um, that kind of experience. Um, so yeah, um, th there's so many things that this headset gets right, and I want to absolutely love it. Um, but the two really key elements of why you get a headset in the first place, the um, sort of the individual sound quality. Yeah, I'm going to say that the sort of individual driver sound quality, and definitely the consistency, because it's made in an ecosystem that isn't looking to make that discrete sound between channels it's it, it's mainly still a stereo um, ecosystem of sound that is being um, upscaled and resampled to make it sound like surround sound that's what that's what most games are te um, geared for that coupled with the issues with the microphone which i just think is 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 annoying that's what i'm gonna say about it annoying it should be a better microphone it looks like an amazing microphone i love how it i love how it tucks in i love how it bends around and it's got a tiny little um, pickup zone and it's very good at cancelling out those um, surround noises so they've, they've done a really good job about that but it's just like they put on the cheapest 
um, t I don't know because it's so compact maybe uh, it's like they try to stick on the, the cheapest type of microphone that is possible which is it's, it's heartbreaking if you like you're heartbreaking and I'll, as I say I want to absolutely adore this headset and there's two <laughs> the two main factors that you get a headset for just lets it down um, and it's, it's such a crying shame so I'm going to have to give it the Rage Critters Rare Award. Yeah, it's our third, it's our bronze tier award, and we don't often give it out, but Rare really does um, captivate this particular product. It's rare, it's niche, it fits a certain role, and it does so well in certain aspects of that role. Um, the, as I say, the positional sound cannot be matched. I've not found a discrete driver um, headset that is so tweakable and... Um, uh, so accurate in the positioning of that audio. So if that is your number one priority, then this headset is definitely, definitely the one for you. Comfort, looks, um, weight, everything about, but it's not the, the two key ingredients. It's beautiful and perfect about this headset. Um, it just seems to be let down on two of the key ingredients and it just, oh, it's, it's really, really frustrating on that um, aspect, but um, yeah, it's, it's still a great headset. Definitely, of all the things said, it's still a great headset. And particularly, particularly if you're not into your mic communications or if you've got another way of communicating with your teammates, that definitely raises the bar. Probably, if the mic wasn't didn't have the issues it did, um, that would probably raise the bar into one of our epic awards. But I just. I just can't. I just can't give it that award based on what I've seen and how it reacts early with our test system today. Anyway, that's the end of a very very long review. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed our content. I know that our video is incredibly long, and I'm sure we'll get a cascade of comments of saying your video your reviews are way way too long. Don't care. That's just our style. As we always say, we've got tons to say. I want to give you all the information of the weeks and weeks that we put into this. Um, so uh, we hope that you enjoyed the style. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, dislike it. Save other people from you know 40 minutes of pain. Um, and But if you did like it, please subscribe to our channel. Loads more comment, content coming down the line. We've got tons of stuff lined up for uh, 2018. Um, as I say, I'm probably going to do an audio special that is to do with um, stereo headsets and Razer surround, so look out for that one. And um, see you on the next video. Um, thanks very much.